How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today I've got some gameplay doing another mission on uh, Lake Cobb. It's a bit of a big mission this one, called Rural Spelunker or something. And the mission, it offs it in all like a weird pattern, <laughs> it's like the worst possible order you could do it in. But this is the uh, line I've drawn, this is the path I'm taking. So I come out of the garage, sort of follow those zigzaggy roads down, go up here, get the first one. I'm hoping I could just cut across the snow there, through the trees, carry on up here. This is going towards like the train station which is there basically and then uh, yeah you got like a warehouse here or something carry on cutting across there I'd already done like this bit of route really um, when I did that overturn train carriage contest so I kind of knew how to cut through there already and then yeah down to here grab that one and then we're now passing like the island where you do the uh, battle on the ice contest there's the cliffs, so you have to go to a house that's down at the bottom of the cliffs. That's where you get the TUZ. To be honest, I would have been better as a way of looking going left, like before I end, like the line I drew. You'll see later on, but it probably would have been a better option. Um, yeah, obviously got a dolphin and loaf, got a uh, roof rack, got a scout fuel trailer. And we're ready to go. I say this one's a bit of a. Uh, a pretty long mission. In fact, it wasn't like too bad. I swear, I have had missions, especially if you get cargo and it goes wrong and you tip it, can easily uh, take a lot longer. I'd like say, of course, I'm bringing a loaf for me. I've got a winch on it. Like this time, I've tried the winch from sort of the middle of the dolphin from its chassis, and it kind of goes up through the sideboard and is connected to the right hand side of the loaf, kind of in the middle of it. You should be able to see it every now and then. Like, yeah, the winch cable. So the loaf can't really jump up at the minute. I suppose it technically could on the left hand side but yeah it's pretty well tucked in there that's what she said. So this is kind of the similar route I did to I can't remember the name of the mission but the one I did with Bruce where you have to grab that service spare part from the other side of uh, the downed helicopter and yeah I like taking uh, taking the old dolphin out and loaf cause he's got to come along well, he's got to get yourself a loaf but yeah, they uh, they make a pretty good pair. Not just that, but the dolphin is pretty good at climbing through a lot of this. The only thing that seems to affect just about everything anyway is the uh, like super snow on this map. But mostly, if you stick into where it says there's roads, it's uh, yeah, make pretty decent progress in this. So anyway, I'm on my way obviously to the first checkpoint with the way I've drawn it out. So uh, yeah, while we're on the way, I'll tell you well, another story about Dave. There's so many to choose from, it's hard to know which to start with. But um, I remember another one where we were picking up a car for him. <laughs> he found, like, again, he used to have this habit of finding cars that are like hundreds of miles away. But they're not even like a rare car, it's just a Fiesta or something. So uh, yeah, he found one in London or wherever and it was like 200 and something miles away. So we set off down there, it wasn't too bad pretty uneventful on the way there but yeah we grabbed this car and then um, I don't know if this is like much of an issue or whatever in other countries but over here you got like road tax and stuff I think this thing wasn't taxed or anything so you can't really drive it on the road but <laughs> believe me pretty much everybody like if you're buying a car <laughs> everybody just considers that yep that gives me a free pass to drive anything home and I mean that's the rules I didn't make it up so anyway yeah he got this car and uh, he was like we started heading home up the motorway and because uh, he didn't have any tax or whatever he was driving behind it behind us because we were thinking if <laughs> there's any cops or anything with the uh, number plate cameras to be fair I will say in his defense and it's the same with everyone this is why it's a stupid lot and the police don't usually do anything is when you get home and tax it you're gonna like tax it for that month or whatever anyway so they're not no one's missing out on anything it's just you gotta get home first and do it mostly like, most people aren't going to do it. It's probably easier now you've got, like, iPhones and can just connect to the internet. But back in the day, yeah, it was like, you ain't just going on your phone and taxing a car. So, um, yeah, he was driving behind us. And for whatever reason, uh, yeah, oh, we caught up with, like, a police car that was just on the motorway. <laughs> so we stayed in the middle lane. And what Dave did was, like, went into the slow lane. And the cops are in the fast lane. And uh, we're all just kind of going along. And then... Just as it happened, it was like traffic was a bit thicker in the uh, fast lane, so this cop started like to where we were basically 
now getting alongside them. <laughs> so Dave was in the slow lane, kind of a little bit behind us. And then the copper put on his brakes a little bit and put the indicator on to go in the middle lane. But at the same time, Dave put his indicator on <laughs> to go in the middle lane behind us because he wanted to try and kind of, I suppose, yeah, just stay near us, <laughs> try and block himself a bit. And um, yeah, they both steered. And I was watching this out of the car because Adam was driving and the rear windows were like not properly blacked out like some, you know, like that sort of thing. They were just like privacy glass or whatever in the windows. So I knew I could see out and see the copper and Dave and everything, but I knew they couldn't see in and see me. And um, so I, I was turned around at this point watching this <laughs> and as they both steered to go for the middle lane, <laughs> they both like swerved at each other and then kind of both realised like, oh shit. <laughs> so they swerved back out, but Dave, Dave, Dave was more committed <laughs> to, to get in the middle lane than the coppers. And um, yeah, like if Dave's future goal was the middle lane. But like the copper was still, he was mostly back in the fast lane, but his tyres were probably still in the middle lane. But obviously the copper also thought, well, I'm the police, <laughs> so I'm bound to... That guy's bound to yield to me. <laughs> so you haven't met Dave yet. Dave ain't yielding. Like I said, that, that middle lane is his goal. That's his mission. So the copper kind of gently went to steer back into the middle lane. <laughs> Dave violently swerved back into the middle lane. <laughs> and um, I still remember this. Like, I could see this copper's face. And <laughs> Dave, like, they, again, not nearly hit him. Like, I assume Dave was kind of half flustered from what had happened and was kind of like I'll try and play it off and just go into the middle lane but yeah like they both kind of went for a swerve in the middle again but Dave definitely was more in the middle lane this time and the copper just did this like double look at Dave as if like what the fuck this guy's trying to ram me out of the middle lane like Smokey and the Bandit style or something and uh, yeah at this point obviously the copper's lights went on and me and Adam were like oh my god we're all fucked I haven't even done anything wrong, Adam hasn't done anything wrong, but just for being witnesses to what just happened, it felt like, yeah, I'm probably going to get locked up for something, just for knowing what happened. And um, so they put their lights on, Dave started pulling over, we were on a motorway, so there was not a lot, like, if we pulled over with him, they'd have probably done us for, like, you're not allowed to stop on a hard shoulder, because it's like an emergency lane, um, unless obviously you need to, but yeah, they pulled Dave over, we just had to carry on driving, we started driving pretty slow, because we were like... Well, we're thinking we may as well pull over at like the next services or whatever because uh, yeah he's got no tax they're probably going to uh, not let him carry on driving the car <laughs> and so we were just driving along so he couldn't really ring him because it's like he'll be talking to them and yeah it just it probably won't help the situation so we were kind of slowly driving along in the slow lane waiting thinking well we'll see what happens and um, yeah about I don't know 10, 10, 15 minutes later or whatever, this fucking Fiesta <laughs> just comes flying up like the fast lane, <laughs> and then he spotted us as he was sort of coming past. So he, he looked at us and did his horn and everything, and then we were like, obviously pretty relieved, started following him. But then it was like, it dawned on me that obviously he got pulled over, and his his next mission now, because we were officially head ahead of him, and like I've, if I've told you, if you've heard the. Uh, when he flew through the petrol station like Dave has to be ahead if he preferably can so when he got pulled over by the police <laughs> all Dave's head was thinking is he's now losing so after he got pulled over by the police like well first we'll get on to that because obviously he's got no tax and it's like they can be a right wanker when it comes to that like even though you're just going to go home and tax it and pay for that month or whatever anyway so it doesn't it's not like you're losing anything it's just try before you buy <laughs> and um yeah, somehow, he said, I believe, to be honest, he says the reason he got away with it is because he didn't fill the logbook out when he bought the car, and because of that, there was no evidence <laughs> that it was his car, and it was still their car, so therefore it still counted on the system as taxed and insured, but then the copper said to him, if you had filled that logbook out, that copper could then legally give him a ticket and say, like, that's proof that you own the car, therefore it isn't taxed anymore or whatever. But yeah, apparently, like, again, I believe him because he definitely got let off with nothing because he comes flying up the fucking motorway 15 minutes later. But then that's what made me laugh, is, like, he's got no tax. He just he just nearly rammed a copper out of the middle lane. 
then got pulled over. Again, I mean, it wasn't on purpose. It was just they both went for the middle lane. He was obviously panicking a bit because he hasn't got tax. Um, but yeah, been pulled over. Copper said what he said and everything and said, I won't do you, but basically get home and tax it. And then Dave's only mission was to pull off from the hard shoulder with the coppers and accelerate faster than the coppers to get far enough ahead of the coppers so they can floor it even more and catch us back up. And it's just like most people would just thank their lucky stars at that point and cruise along at 60 or whatever next to next to them, but not Dave. Dave, Dave had a, a, an imaginary race to win or something, so yeah, I mean that's what it's like, just grabbing a car with Dave. Everything is pretty funny with a Dave. Anyway, back to this. I mean, where are we up to? I've grabbed one marker, as you can see now. The loaf. He nearly tipped, but because that winch is connected, he's a professional. He knows what he's doing. I mean, to be fair, the loaf does stay in the sideboard pretty well. That's why I tend to use the sideboard as well more than the uh, flatbed. I mean, even going up there, every now and then the dolphin does catch its bumper a bit on that stuff, but. It, that cord, like that rocky bit, kind of does make you lean to the right quite a lot. And the fact that the loaf was also leaning over to the right, like the uh, yeah, the dolphin does pretty well, I think, at not tipping. You can definitely get a, like hit a dodgy bump or whatever and tip, like. But generally speaking, it's um, yeah, not bad. I don't roll it as much as I probably should. So at this point, I drove into here. I was going to try and just go through kind of two wheels in, two wheels out. But I knew by this point you can see that piece of ice that's literally glitched through my tyre. It's just like it locks you in place. I've spent so many hours in the ice by now that I just know it already as soon as I see it and it was like yeah. I wasn't even moving when I was accelerating or revert. Not even just moving a tiny bit. It was just absolutely locked in place. So uh, what I did though, <laughs> unfortunately I've been using this method a couple of times recently. It wasn't saying saving so I quickly turned it off, loaded the game back up and I just loaded back up to here because I, obviously I could have got out of um, that ice. It was just more, I don't even know, <laughs> just that was what I decided. I was like, no, I'm not even winching it out. I'm just going to load the game back up. I kind of like to keep testing as well, like loading the game back up. It has worked. Again, use it at your own risk. Like, that's up to you if you do it. I've never lost any trucks or anything doing it, but I'm just saying, yeah, like, <laughs> seek your own advice. Uh, yeah, this time I'm just going round, like, obviously there's, like, a big ice patch there, so... I'll just go round it. That's what I've sort of said before with the ice. I, I certainly don't hate the ice at all. I actually think it's a very good addition, and I've enjoyed messing around in it for hours and hours. But, overall, like, especially if you're on a mission, yeah, it's just, even though I can't help myself and I just usually try and risk it still every time, but generally speaking it's just a little bit too clingy and difficult to where I'm mean, bearing in mind it's like a fully upgraded dolphin so it's one of the better things that would get through there but yeah it's just a bit of a pain in the ass to the point where it's like I'd rather just drive or it, it certainly makes more sense to just drive around it like it isn't even worth chancing it or anything it's probably just going to lock you in place and then yeah in quite a lot of places where the ice breaks they uh seem to have purposely made sure there's no trees around that you can winch to. Or even worse, there is trees, <laughs> but they pop out of the ground after like a millisecond. So, I just cut through that factory, grabbed the second checkpoint, I went over like that hill. Uh, this is essentially the same route I took uh, yeah, on that overturned train carriage mission. This is kind of like the, my, uh, the most direct route. And it's not too bad, there is a bit of this super snow that does slow you down quite a lot. I mean, normally the dolphin, like even in the review and that, it goes flying along in the snow normally, so... But it is what it is, it's not the end of the world. At least, to be fair, it's not all of the snow that's like this stupid super snow stuff. <laughs> went flying down there, that tree don't break. But, the loaf didn't fall out, the dolphin didn't roll, we're all good. I just put some fuel in a minute ago, by the way, so... I believe that was the first tank of fuel up to now. And then to my right is like where you end the uh, overturn train carriage contest. So I'm carrying on. I Again, I knew this was breakable ice. And I knew if I just drove like 
a hundred meters to the right of me where it starts to become water it'll be stable enough that I could have drove over it but I mean I have made it through the water before with the old dolphin it's just again when I was looking around that like those pieces of ice lying flush against my truck were the problem and then now that piece of ice rotated around and has locked in between the front and rear wheels and again it's just like there isn't anything so you know what that means Just professionals everywhere. Got a goddamn backup dolphin and loaf. That's what we've got. Look at it. Easy. It's like the scene from Lady and the Tramp. Lady and the Dolphin. I was sharing the spaghetti. This is the sequel. <laughs> this time she sucks the meatball. <laughs> Sometimes I do talk some shit. I'll give it that. And we're good. See? Mere seconds and we're off. Cheers. Cheers, loaf and dolphin. Dolphin and loaf. And we're good to go. So what are we? Yeah, two checkpoints down. Not bad. I had to have a bit of a Beastie Boys action. Every time I have to rescue something, <laughs> I just stick my headset on, stick some music on. Have a good old time. See, music. Music was just better back in the day. In fact, I believe it's objectively because nowadays, and this is n nothing like, there's still good music that does come out, but because of how easy it is to release music these days compared to what it used to be more shit can be released as well <laughs> to be honest it was back in the day like it had to be good had to be good to make it especially in the 70s like in the 60s and that I think making like vinyls and that was pretty dirt cheap so you could take a chance on a song and print some vinyls but I think it was like in the early 70s there was sort of the oil crisis and everything price of vinyls shot right up so suddenly then it wasn't just as easy as uh, making a song because record labels they didn't want to risk printing like a hundred thousand records and it not selling because they're going to be stuck with a load of dead money that ain't doing anything so it had to be good to make it. That song Tubular Bells um, like the Exorcist theme tune that nearly like uh, I think a record company nearly didn't or he had trouble like trying to get that song to the forefront because people didn't want to take a chance anymore because of the oil crisis who would have known? <laughs> but yeah, now... And again, it's not like I could write a song now and put it on YouTube. It doesn't mean it's going to be any good. But some people do. And it is good. But I still... <laughs> still think music back in the day was overall... Good shit. By the way, this bit where I've just cut across... The reason why I just drove straight across the snow instead of cutting across where I originally had the line drawn... That little path is ridiculous. I drove through there the other week and it's like a pure super snow patch to the point where the dolphin again was probably going like one mile an hour if that but it was just annoying and even then there wasn't even a lot of trees you could reach really. I do wish they would reduce the amount, or not necessarily reduce the amount of trees on this game but they've managed to somehow well, so it must be planned, <laughs> but everywhere you get stuck, you might be able to reach a tree, but it's one of those stupid trees that just pops out the ground after a millisecond. In which case, it's just a waste of my time, <laughs> a waste of winch points that I have to flick through every time. But then when you try and go through somewhere, there's always a bloody solid tree that stops you dead, so... Yeah, they could do with reversing them, or just, yeah, maybe removing at least some of the trees that are just impossible to knock down. Anyway, still flying across the countryside. That's another good thing about the dolphin, though. He does go cross country pretty well. This is now the kind of battle on the ice area, really. That uh, icon marker thing in front of me is battle on the ice. And I'd kind of do an opposite lap to the way I'm going now. But again, because I've uh, had a, quite a few goes by now on battle on the ice, um, I kind of knew driving along here 
it, the dolphin might break in a bit, but because it's pretty narrow, like the amount of, I don't know, like the ice doesn't seem to be too bad here. I, I never really get locked into place on Battle on the Ice for whatever reason. I always do it pretty much every other place though. <laughs> never stand a chance at them places. Still keep trying, one day. Again, it's handy when you need to smack a tree out of the way. That one. That tree thought he had made it, but he hadn't. He just met a dolphin. An off road dolphin and a loaf. See, this is a good setup to go with though, because if for some reason I found a cargo mission while I was somewhere, I've got room, I could just get the loaf out. But until then, I've got a loaf as a spare winch. I've actually still got the advanced winch on this. Well, I always have the advanced winch on this loaf, but I could have brought another loaf that's got an autonomous winch, so even if we both tipped, I could still get out of it, but I was feeling risky, feeling dangerous, so I went, uh, yeah, like this. Like I say, I've got a loaf, I've got an extra winch, I've got uh, a roof rack, got spare tyres, 300 repair points, 120 fuel, but I've got a scout fuel trailer that's got 900, so I knew that I'd get the job done anyway. So now I'm basically at the bottom of the cliffs. And of course they had to make it as awkward as possible. I'm not really complaining about that. <laughs> I like that this game is pretty awkward. There is a few things I would adjust. Like someone was saying the other day, and it, like it's fair enough, it's their opinion. Um, but like, it's a simulation game, not an arcade game, but then Again, this is just my opinion. I sort of believe it's like some of the things that happen in this game are beyond simulation. Like, I'm not expecting an arcade game where I can go 100 mile an hour through deep snow and whatever, but there's definitely, if you look at some of these trucks in real life, the way they behave and handle and the kind of terrain that they do absolutely just eat their way through, it's, um, yeah, and I can see why they did because it's, it's the whole purpose of the game sort of thing, but. At least once you've completed it and that, long term, like, if you've got the PC and you can already have mods and everything, that obviously extends the amount of things you have to do, like, really, they should get on with adding console mods, uh, well, mods to consoles, because once they've done that, no one or less people are going to be gagging for, like, the next map to be added and stuff. They can sort of buy themselves a bit of breathing space. I mean, it worked out pretty nicely. I reversed up there. I wasn't even thinking about it, but I just happened to line up perfectly with a maintenance trailer that I flew off the cliff the other day. And, uh, yeah, quickly attached it to the dolphin. Fixed myself. I could have and maybe should have grabbed some fuel, but it doesn't really matter. Like, um, Yeah, I took, like, a, over a thousand litres with me, so I knew I was going to be fine either way. I suppose I kind of wanted to make it worth bringing. <laughs> Kind of be a bit of a waste if I just grab some fuel from that along the way. Yeah, I, d I get a bit iffy with this section, like when I just clip them trees. I don't think I've ever locked into a tree with the actual dolphin itself, but like as I've shown in a few previous videos, the uh, the trailer can sometimes. It was around here where it happened. Well, it's happened at least twice now. So I can't remember when I I must have dis disconnected the loaf, so just winching him quickly. For some reason as well, the winch points have been messing around. Now, like, halfway through the mission, the middle winch points of the loaf weren't showing up. And it's not specific to the loaf. It's done it with all sorts of vehicles I've tried. So I couldn't winch, like, through the sideboard and just pull it down into the sideboard. So, uh, yeah, instead I'm just winching, like, bumper to bumper, I suppose. Now basically, I needed to turn right there, but it's such an awkward corner and a pain in the ass. I wasn't even going to waste my time trying to do it, then flipping and then spending 10 minutes getting myself back up. I just turned left, drove a little bit further up here. I wanted to uh, see how my trailer was doing anyway. That was a trailer that glitched into a tree the other day. Uh, yeah, just did a quick U-turn. Where I just reversed into is uh, there's a upgrade there. I believe that might be the all-wheel drive for the GMC. Yeah. Full up, kept it pinned, fingers crossed. I made that turn in, but I didn't really make this one. So I'm basically just coming back up to the cliff. It's it's there to the right that I just kind of drove out of. But yeah, this corner is such an awkward sod. I've done it before. <laughs> Been here, done that, got the t-shirt. I knew what to do. I mean, the damage model again. 
I'd be fine taking some damage there, but completely wiping out a tyre and nine tenths of my suspension or whatever is a bit over the top. So we're at the cliffs. There's all my trailers. Previous attempts. <laughs> I just get get bored I suppose. When I'm done it's like alright, see you trailer. Well I did attempt to drive something back the other day, I can't remember what. And it didn't go well. I fell down, but I tried. It's a thought that counts. So anyway, we finally made it through all that. We can finally open the taps up a bit, get them horses galloping flying down this hill. I mean this is basically the opposite way now to where I usually head to the cliffs. But as you can see when the dolphin's not pulling like uh, too many trailers etc. I did bog down a bit there. I mean once you hit like the certain bits of water and boggy mud it kind of automatically discounts high gear. It just makes your wheel spin. But once I started like trying to avoid them skirt along the edges a bit. Soon got it back into high and we're flying. Again that's what I do quite uh, like with the dolphin. It's got a nice nice pace to it in the high gear but it's also it's definitely a bit of an off-roading beast. I, I would say it is one of the best trucks in the game certainly up there I mean yeah it is <laughs> to be honest, I'm gonna do my I want to do my like start my favorite trucks videos but I keep on and an hour and over which one between 10 and 11th it's a tough call so, flew round here, we tipped to the side, loaf, see it looked like it jumped out, but it's a goddamn professional. I mean, look at this, this, that is the mark of a professional. Just scoots his own little wheel back into the sideboard, and we're good to go. Does his horn, he's signed off on the job, and we're off. See, the dolphin is still pretty good at not tipping, like, even when I drove back out of there, considering I have got a loaf on the back and trailer kind of trying to encourage me that way once it's tipping and we're off again I mean like I've also got obviously fixed like a fully fixed truck again with the suspension even when I whacked it when I was going across the cliffs uh, got the roof rack on the loaf so that sorted it out like I say the roof rack especially on the loaf is like 300 po some of the Scouts are 300 points. One that I know isn't, which I suppose should be, is the Tatra, and that's only got like 150 repair points. I would like it though if you could choose a lesser amount to fix something. Like sometimes, if something costs 300 to fix, it just takes 300, and it's like, well, I kind of <laughs> would have liked to have dished them points out there. So, anyway, I was driving along here, I ended up just smashing through. This is where I do like it. I've never been to this bit before. So it was kind of like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> you got me game. Like, I just went through the ice. But again, it just absolutely locks you in place. It was having none of it. So I started winching out to the trees behind me. And I'll cut like a chunk of this out because I was kind of... I had a few attempts at it and manoeuvring around and all sorts. But essentially, I eventually... Pulled the winch to a tree over here, kind of reversed back out of the ice, and I just drove around the side. Like I said, if they just tone it down a little bit, I mean, I, again, I'm, it's my own fault. I still try and chance it every time. Although, to be fair, I didn't even know that was ice there. And this is what I was saying near the beginning of the video. Uh, when I was just driving, like, after I flew down that hill and cut through the watery bit where you get the TUZ 16, I'd have been better off turning right where there's kind of a crossroad. Because I've ended up basically just trying to cut across a far more awkward bit. I mean, look at it, even once you get around the water. It's just where this game likes to be a troll. This is apparently a road. I mean, emphasis on the word apparently. Because it doesn't look very road-like to me. In fact, I'd argue I could pick a better road than this. Keep it pinned, fingers crossed. I don't even know, unless it was just... I'm not even sure. Maybe it was just the edges of the tyres were touching the rocks and it just kind of locked me in there, but... It was having none of it. But that, I don't think that was, like, locked in place. I think that was just 
maybe unlucky that like the gap in those rocks are just a tiny bit narrower than uh, like my wheel base width or whatever. So yeah, I got to this point. As you see, I've just looked on the map. It says there is a road right here with some giant rocks in the way that if I drive over, I might well tip. And at this point, I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not having it. I'm not getting this far. The game is not suckering me into it again, where it tells me there's a road there, and then I chance it, and then it all goes horribly wrong. So I'm going to indent my own road. The reason I just hoovered the loaf in there is that it kind of makes the trailer lift up a bit more. It was still catching a bit there, but it just kind of flicks around. It doesn't really try and get tucked in underneath or anything. You definitely don't want that to happen. So, I'll just quickly cut this out. It said the loaf's out of fuel. I must admit, it did pretty well. I've, I'm on about my third tank of fuel on the uh, Dolphin, so... It's used all the good stuff. So yeah, give it a bit of fuel and we're off. Again, just looking on the map, created like my own path. I mean, as I said, I reckon I could make a better road than the game had decided. So even now though, we're leaning pretty far to the left. And... I know there's a chance if I hit a rock at a dodgy angle, I could definitely roll now. I mean, there you see. But, right, no. Loaf's not having it. Dolphin's not having it. Both goddamn professionals. We've got a mission to finish. Training for the Mars expedition. So, cut through there. That's another thing, though. I, it's not. There is stuff that climbs over rocks pretty damn well, but I would definitely say the dolphin is up there, considering it's got a little bit of a long snout that can catch on the stuff. It's not that bad. I wasn't even sure at first. I was like, is this water or ice? <laughs> I, like, I hope it's ice, because I'm about to go flat out into it. So I was having a good time. Almost forgot to even turn here. About now, I was like, oh yeah, shit. <laughs> I'm on a mission. I was enjoying the scenery. That was just a little glitch there. Game, well not the game, I think it is more my computer because it does it across multiple games. So and here we are with the final one. Pretty kind of in the middle of the map. Finally got here, a yes, fuck your fence. <laughs> Fuck your garden. Fuck your chicken coop. Oh, hang on. Oh, okay. Nope. In Russia, chicken fucks you. Uh, yeah, so what, we got about 10 grand. I mean, just like bloody hell. Could have duplicated like 17 TUZ 16 bumpers. But yeah, it was fun. I did actually have a pretty good time messing around with a dolphin and loaf. Going for a good old lap of the map. That's the kind of theme I was fancying tonight. I've, like when I was doing all the reviews, and I'm definitely glad I did all the reviews, but yeah. There was a lot of times I just wanted to have a little mess around, do a bit of gameplay. That counts. I hit the garage. So, let's bring him back up Dolphin and Loaf back. Hit some ice. Completely deleted me. My front nose caught down then. I'm trying that bumper out, like, that's why I sort of zoom the camera in. <laughs> Make sure you can see it. Um, yeah, I've kind of got a scaffold bumper on. I mean, look at it. Ice is going crazy. Nearly hit that rock. Realised where I was going again. Oh, we got collapsed suspension, blown tyre, at least one, possibly more. Fuel leaking, and look at it! That ice, I just ran over and gave a good slap in. It had mates. It's like a highway robbery going on, see? That's why you gotta drive on the left. Be prepared for this shit. Pull out your goddamn loaf. Slap them right back. So, after I started jiggling around on the ice for like 10 seconds. Eventually, when it settled, uh, the uh, A's of the Dolphin probably would have started anyway, but the loaf started. Oh yeah, this one's a green loaf. <laughs> Meet Dr. Green Loaf. So, yeah. I mean, this is why you get yourself a loaf. It's a goddamn horse of a vehicle. Why wouldn't you get yourself a loaf? Why wouldn't you get yourself ten? I've finally got ten loaves, or at least ten. Yeah, I think it has only ten. I'll have to look into that. I mean, what a goddamn professional. But it was saying out of fuel while I was winching to it, so I knew now. <laughs> I was like, quick. We've got to stick the fuel in from the loaf. The loaf's going to give its life to make me make sure I get home. 
And then, yeah, jump in the dolphin pretty damn quick, because that fuel is going to be pissing out at a rate of knots. I was thinking right now, if another piece of ice decides to just fly up through the floor and tip me over, <laughs> I'll cancel the whole damn thing. But we're good. To be fair, it's never done that to me before, I don't think. I have got stuck in ice and blah blah blah, but I've never seen it really, like, do what it did there. But anyway, we scraped by, we got home, mission accomplished. So yeah, that's about it for today. I mean, this was, my brother was over last night, that's why I've been a bit busy. Um, and he knocked this trailer over, I kept trying to tip it back earlier. Just while I was driving past, I'd clip it, and it wasn't having it, so I thought, right, I'll show it, show it the loaf way to flip it. But anyway, that's about it for today. I hope you've enjoyed, thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon. It's over loaf. See, loaf approved.